So UFC 249 is in the books and it absolutely delivered with the card full of finishes, crazy knockouts, and I'm gonna get into them and break them down and even show you my live reaction to the card and it did not disappoint whatsoever. So in the first fight of the night, Greg Hardy defeated Jorgen De Castro by unanimous decision and he really showcased that he's growing as an MMA fighter. have gone out there without technique and kind of just swung crazy with De Castro but he ended up making adjustments in between rounds and found a way to come out on top and impose his game more aggressively throughout the fight and edge out DeCastro in a unanimous decision win. In the next fight, Calvin Cater knocks out Jeremy Stevens, stops him at the end of the second round and uses an elbow to do so. Crazy finish to this fight. It was an absolute banger up to that point. Calvin Cater showcasing his technique. Jeremy Stevens throwing heavy power at him for the first two rounds until the midpoint of the second round when Calvin Cater was able to find an opening, launch a precision elbow that caught Jeremy Stevens right on the chin and put him down for the count. Here's my reaction to that fight. Oh, he's out. That's it. He just knocked out Jeremy Stevens. That's crazy. Calvin Cater's no joke, dude. Oh, he's bleeding all over the place. He hit him with a nasty elbow. Definitely a huge statement for Calvin Cater at 145 pounds, and I certainly think he's gonna get a top three opponent in his next time out after a performance like that. Next up, Francis Ngannou versus Hyrzinho Rosenstrike. 20 seconds is all it took for Francis Ngannou to knock out Hyerzinho in devastating fashion. I'm gonna show you my reaction right now and I think it'll tell you enough about how crazy that fight was. You gotta wonder like how they're gonna test the water. Okay, so Rosen strikes just going leg kicks. Oh, he's out, he's out. Oh, 20 seconds, Francis Ngannou. He's out cold! Oh my god! And after a performance like that, you have to think Nganu is right back in line for a title shot against whoever will be fighting, whether it be Stipe Miocic or Daniel Cormier, or, or maybe it'll be vacant. Whoever the opponent may be, we know that Francis Ngannou is at the top of the division. I predicted Henry Cejudo would beat Dominic, decision, uh, Dominic Cruz by decision. However, he ended up stopping him at the right at the end of the second round. Right when Dominic and Henry clashed heads and Keith Peterson stopped it momentarily, they come back only with seconds left in the second round. Henry was able to land a knee, drop Dominic, swarm him, and stop him with just two seconds left in the round. Oh! Oh! Is he gonna finish him? He's still fighting. Oh, he stopped him! He stopped him at the end of the round! Wow! Incredible! After he's cut open with the headbutt, comes back and stops it right with the 10 second mark goes off. In the main event, my first loss, my first wrong prediction of my MMA analysis career, when Justin Gaethje defeats Tony Ferguson by TKO in round number five after an absolute banger of a fight. For the first two rounds, it appeared Tony Ferguson was getting the better of Gaethje, landing more shots and at the end of the second, dropping him with a hard uppercut. In between rounds two and three though, Trevor Whitman got into the head of Justin Gaethje and made sure he made adjustments and fought more tactically. Those adjustments paid huge dividends for Justin, who was able to use his defense, get out of the way of Tony's shots, and land hard strikes as the fight went on. He was able to implement this game plan all the way up until round number five when he had Tony badly cut up, Tony had a broken orbital, and he was bloodied. And by that point, Justin Gaethje put it on him a couple more times, and Herb Dean had seen enough. That one was bad. That one was real bad. TKO, Justin Gaethje, fifth round, wow. He stopped it. Tony wasn't even looking at him. Wow. What a savage. Comes to title fights like these, I argue that you should let the fight go as long as it needs so that there's no question about it. 
and there's a lot of controversy and questions surrounding the stoppage of Henry Cejudo and Dominic Cruz's fight. And given the knee that Henry landed right before he put Dominic down, I wouldn't argue against that stoppage. It was a pretty crazy sequence of events. However, Tony Ferguson was still on his feet, but he was obviously very damaged and wearing all of that damage from the rest of the fight. But, I mean, Justin Gaethje did quite enough to solidify the fact that he was more violent than Tony Ferguson in that fight. And the next fight we're gonna see is Justin Gaethje versus Habib Nurmagomedov for the lightweight strap. An incredible matchup coming up, hopefully later this year. With that being said, I hope you all enjoy this recap and my reactions. I cannot wait for the UFC card headlined by Anthony Smith and Glover Teixeira. I will definitely be back with my predictions and breakdown of that card. Hope everybody stays safe. Have a great week.